Okay, so my next um, little takeaway from The Remains of the Day by Kajiwa Ujiguru is from the very first line of the book. And I'll read it for you here, so we, we're clear about what we're talking about here. Um, it seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition that has been preoccupying my imagination now for some days. End quote. That's the first line of the book. It seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition that has been preoccupying my imagination now for some days. What I love about that line is it kind of thematically you know, sets the tone for everything really that this book is about. What is this book about? I, I think it's about, obviously, like many novels, it's about a lot of things. It's about Britishness on a wider, more general level, a national characteristic, a sense of class and what that means and what the Britishness meant in the 50s and, you know, what it means to us in the in the 80s and 90s and maybe now if we read it now. But it's all about an individual. It's about an individual person that has a role in society, in a, in a class-ridden society, and he, his, his role is one of service. And right the way through the book, his conversation is about the nature of that service and where his service persona ends and where he, as a free individual, begins. And for him, that line is non-existent. He, he is a butler through and through, and he, 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 he maintains that there is a great dignity in that, that there isn't a mask there isn't a uniform to shuck off at some point and then you just become yourself no he inhabits his role you know to the nth degree of his being but what's interesting about that is as as the harry smith character later comes you know which is the kind of final confrontation really of that whole narrative is is what happens to your individual agency and when you're in service what happens to that sense of your own decision making and choosing what's right and wrong and using your own discernment to decide whether something is noble and worth following or not i.e lord darlington who's starting to support fascists this first line is fascinating because stevens in 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 giving up his kind of individual agency, if you like, um, is, it, you know, Harry Smith puts it in, in terms that he's a slave. You are virtually a slave. You have become a slave if you don't have that kind of agency. And I think what's really fascinating about this first line, and it's not, it's kind of not hard and biting, it's kind of gentle, but Stevens tells you on the very first line of the book that he doesn't have agency. He hasn't had it. So listen again. It seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition that has been preoccupied by my imagination now for some days. It seems. He doesn't know. It seems likely. Now, if he was making his own decisions, he'd say, yeah, I'm going. I'm, I'm going to go for a trip. I'm going to go on this expedition, but he doesn't say that. He says, it seems increasingly likely. Why? Because he's not in charge of what he does. And in that first paragraph there, that quite long opening paragraph, it carries on an expedition, I should say, which I will undertake alone in the comfort of Mr. Faraday's Ford. So he's not using his own car, he's using somebody else's car. An expedition which, as I foresee it, will take me through much of the finest countryside of England, the West Country, and may keep me away from Darlington Hall for as much as five or six days. The idea of such a journey came about, I should point out, from a most kind suggestion put to me by Mr Faraday himself one afternoon, almost a fortnight ago. He hasn't even chosen to do this himself. This opening line and paragraph is so fascinating because in a very gentle, you know, implicit way without pointing it out Ishiguru has set the tone for the kind of core themes of this book one of the core threads of this book is a conversation about agency you know a conversation about duty and loyalty within the framework yes of a cl- of a conversation about britishness and and class society but you can step outside that and, pl- and apply, and this is what I love about literature, you can apply that to your own life. How much agency do you really have? 
how, how much of a free agent are you in your life? How much can you genuinely do what you want to do? And really interestingly, you know, what's fascinating about literary fiction is it works at levels and the levels aren't separate. They kind of thread together. So the individual story is woven into the wider narrative. So where you're talking about July 56, I've done a little note on that before. And you're thinking about July 56 as a as a great symbolic date where the British aren't free anymore to unilaterally, unilaterally act. They don't have a complete free agency anymore as a global power. The Americans over, over, overruled them. At the same time as you're looking at a symbol of Britishness, a butler, who is trying to reconcile the fact that he's, he's not had the agency, he's not had the freedom, if you like, that he really has tried to convince himself he's had through his whole life. And what has that meant? What has that meant? What's the meaning of that? What's the significance of that for what his life stands for? And and I love the fact that Ishiguro nods to all of that in that first paragraph. And especially in that first line, it seems, are the first two words... Not it is, not I will be going, it seems increasingly likely that I really will undertake the expedition. So there's my little takeaway from the very first line um, and how, you know, how the, the kind of strategies and the kind of like everything's in play with these meanings. You know, you, you can find great riches in, in so much of these texts. So that's my little takeaway, the opening line of the book and individual agency. <laughs> Thanks very much.